In this video we're going to take a look at what multiplexers are, how they can be implemented, and what they can be used for. A multiplexer has two or more data inputs, one data output, and one or more control inputs, for selecting which of the data inputs is actually con gets connected to the out to the data output. Here is an example of a two to one multiplexer. That's the simplest kind of multiplexer with two data inputs. The graphical symbol is shown down here. And uh, W0, W1, those are the two data inputs. F is the data output and S is the select input here. The truth table is such that if s is equal to 0, then the upper of the inputs goes out to the output, and if s is equal to 1, then the lower one of the two inputs goes to the output. Here is an implementation of a 2 to 1 multiplexer. What we need is we need to have a pass for each of the data inputs that can be turned on or off, so we do that here with those, NAND gate, with those AND gates, and then we have to take the output and combine those two outputs together, so we do that with an OR gate. So the output F is equal to S0, uh, that's th this pass here, times or ended with omega naught or with W0, and that uh, establishes a pass that goes through the multiplexer like this, and then through the output like that. And if we uh, choose s to be equal to 1, then this AND gate here is enabled and we have a pass that goes here to the output along that green line. The extended truth table is shown over here, so it shows for that for all values of s, w1, and w0, and what you can see is that uh, if we go back here to this color for the upper pass, so the W0 gets uh, output to the uh, data output here, and if we choose S equal to 1, then uh, this output uh, we don't care about, but this output here is what goes through or this input here is what goes through to the output. And so we end up with this um, logic expression f is equal to s0 times w0 plus s times w1. So what are multiplexers good for? Uh, one example is that we can switch between uh, a clock run and set mode for a digital clock. So we have here the run mode and the set modes, and we choose um, how the counter of the clock is counting. So here is the counter that's supposed to count the time. Here is the display. And uh, when the clock wakes up, it might be just at zero, zero, and we have to set it to what the current time is. So we would then go into the set mode up here by applying a zero to the select input and then we can set the clock by using this manual switch here and advance the digits. This is just a simplified form. In reality uh, this switch here needs to have some debouncing but this just shows schematically that we can do a manual advance. And then once the clock is set we want to put it into run mode so that it runs from a pulse generator that uh, generates pulses with a one second uh, timing in between the pulses. And then, of course, uh, if this is set to one and um, the select input is set to one, then we choose the lower input here and that goes to the counter and it will just simply count seconds or minutes, whatever the basic time uh, frame is for that particular clock. Another use for multiplexers is to actually implement logic functions as shown in this example here. So we have three variables here. 
um, x0, x1, and x2. So the function f here is equal to a function of x2, x1, and x0. Okay. Now how do we know what that function is? We start out with the last one of those multiplexers and we take a look at what the inputs are. So the upper input here is actually x1 and the lower input is some function g that comes from the second multiplexer that we have in here which has an input, a constant input of 1 and also another input which is x1. So if you go back here to that second or the last multiplexer before the function output, uh, x0 is either going to choose the upper input or the lower input. So the upper input is chosen when x0 is 1, so we get an x0 naught times x1 for the pass that comes in through the multiplexer like this. And then when x0 is equal to 1, then we are looking at the pass that comes from the lower in data input. So we have here an, an x0 times g if, with that function g here. But the function g itself comes from a multiplexer and it can be written as being x2 not because it's uh, from the upper data input times 1 because that input is set permanently to 1 and then plus x2 when x2 is 1 we take the lower input here which happens to be x1 x2 x1 and so if we substitute this g here in there, then we are getting the expression that is shown down here. So f is equal to x0 naught x1 plus x0 times in parentheses x2 naught times 1 plus x2 x1 and we can expand that into the expression down here x0 naught x1 plus x0 times x2 naught plus x0 x2 x1. Notice that we did not have to put any explicit inverters or, or any other gates in here. It can all be done using multiplexers. And um, modern devices like uh, FPGAs, field pro programmable devices, actually make use of that because it turns out it's relatively easy to implement multiplexers on a, a silicon chip. So here is another example of a multiplexer. This one is larger. It has four inputs, four data inputs and one data output. Typically, those um, multiplexers come in the form of having a power of two uh, in the number of inputs. So we would have two input multiplexers, four input multiplexers, and so forth. Uh, for four inputs now we have to have uh, two select bits in order to select one out of the four. So here is the truth table 00011011 selects respectively W0, W1, W2 and W3. And here is an implementation of the whole thing. So we have um, S0 being distributed here to those two uh, AND gates. And then we have also S0 not distributed to this one and to this one here. So you can see that the W0 input uh, can go through if S0 is inverted. So that would correspond to the S0 being 0 here. And also it, uh, the W2 can go through if S0 is inverted. That corresponds to this 0 down here. And when um, S0 is 1, then we can put through either W1 or W3, so that's uh, those two here, depending on what S1 is. 
And with S1, you can see that the upper two AND gates, they are driven from uh, S1 not. Okay, so they are driven here from S1 not. And the lower two are driven from S1 itself. And so that corresponds to the case when we have those two equal to 1. The logic expression for the output here f is equal to s1 naught s0 naught times w naught and then plus s1 naught s0 uh, times w1 plus s1 s0 naught times w2 plus s1 s0 times w3.